to be involved in the kind of activities that him and Kelly were involved in. And he carried on with them. He risked everything for this. There was a great tempest of wind at midnight as we left Mortlake with our wives and children toward two ships waiting for us near Gravesend. So Dee decides to up and leave, take his family, and on the words of Medini, go to Poland. And if he does this, the angels have promised him great secrets are going to be revealed. I mean, this is an amazing thing for him. It's a lifetime, a one-time opportunity to try to find out why we're here, how things work, why they work, and the angels have promised him that. So yeah, of course, you're going to go along with what the angels say. Why wouldn't you? As soon as Dee left Mortlake, a mob descended upon the house, and his library and alchemical laboratories were ransacked. For Dee, Kelly, and their families, there was no going back. After an epic six-month journey, Dee and Kelly finally arrived in the Polish capital, Krakow. As soon as they got there, they began scrying again, and the angelic messages were delivered with even greater intensity. It seemed to Dee that his unshakable faith in the angels was about to be rewarded. They are told that there's something, a powerful message is going to be dictated to them. The first angel begins to talk to them about a, a lost book of Enoch, which is the language of the angels, the original language spoken by Adam before the fall. The angel told us, I will open to thee the secrets of nature and the riches of the world. Many thousand secrets in which you are still yet but children. This was the same language that was revealed to Enoch, who in biblical tradition was the first person to speak with God after the fall of man. The language, it is said, is the power by which we were all made, by which nature was framed and the whole universe was constructed. It is the very mathematics, it is the very framework of all the mystery of all creation. Dee believed that the language he was about to receive would be the key to unlocking the secrets of the universe. Letter by letter, the dictation of the Enochian language began. After months of scrying and hundreds of hours looking into the crystal ball, the angels revealed what appeared to be a completely new language. The Enochian language is designed to express the primal essence of things. When it's spoken, it's it's supposed to be spoken from the stomach, but using the magical voice. It's a very barbarous and rich sounding language. Gahei Istiva Kahiza Mi Mikeli Zodu. Spirits of ye fourth angle are nine, mighty in the firmament of the waters. The Enochian language is based on an alphabet of 22 letters. The language has its own words, grammar, and syntax, and resembles no known tongue. Although some scholars have compared it to Hebrew, attempts to discover its origins have been unsuccessful. To suppose that this is an invented language, invented by Kelly, you would have to suppose that Kelly was some sort of creative and linguistic genius who was able to spontaneously invent a functional working language complete with grammar and vocabulary and not only invent it but invent it backwards with the dictation of the Enochian language complete the angel set D an extraordinary test and as he's receiving this angelic data very, very fast, and he can hardly keep up, all of a sudden, out of the blue, Medimi says that he has to go and see Rudolf II, the most powerful man, the ruler of Bohemia and of the Holy Roman Empire. And he has to go and tell him that he is possessed, he's an evil man. 
It's like a death sentence if he goes. Dee had already given up everything in England in his thirst for hidden knowledge. But was his belief in the angels strong enough to carry out this suicidal mission? In August 1584, John Dee made his way to Prague to confront the Holy Roman Emperor. He was effectively an enemy, and this enemy figure went into the very heart of the enemy territory, to the seat of power in Prague. In the 16th century, the Holy Roman Empire was a vast kingdom that covered a large part of Northern Europe. The empire was ruled by Rudolf II, a notoriously enigmatic and volatile man. Rudolf was a great patron of alchemists and indulged his passion for the bizarre with his own personal regiment made up entirely of dwarves. The Holy Roman Empire was vital to Rome in the uneasy balance of power between the Catholic and Protestant churches. This is Rudolf's palace. This is the very church that Dee would have had to walk past on his way to the confrontation with Rudolf. And this gives you an idea of the power of the church, the money and the power that it has. And this is what he's taking on. is a heretical Protestant, and he's about to give a message to Rudolf that he's been asked to give by the angels, and this is a lethal thing to do. His back is right up against the wall now. He's probably shaking in his shoes. He's terrified for his own family. The angel of the Lord hath appeared to me and rebuketh you for your sins. If you will not hear me, the Lord will sweep you off the face of the earth, and you shall perish miserably. And the message he has to say that, is that Rudolf is an evil man, that he has demons around him, and that if he doesn't listen to Dee and the angels and what they have to say, that God will put his foot on Rudolf's breast and push him off his throne. But if he does listen to the angels, uh, then he will become a supreme emperor and will overcome the devil. He is a man going into very much the lion's den of Roman Catholicism and saying, you must live and rule according to the revelation that I have. Here we see Dee in the role as prophet. Here we see Dee as a man convinced of his mission and willing to put his life on the line to deliver that message. Rudolf was both astounded and intrigued by Dee's speech. Whilst Dee waited anxiously for the Emperor's reaction, the angels became impatient, ordering Dee to deliver a new message to Rudolf. It was obvious that some new PR strategy was needed on behalf of the angels. It was at this point that the angels apparently suggested to Dee that the Philosopher's Stone would be enough of a crowd puller to get people like Rudolf on their side. When Edward Kelly first arrived at Mortlake, he had a small bag of red powder that he said had been stolen from an ancient site at Glastonbury. He believed it to be the vital ingredient that would help make the Philosopher's Stone. The Philosopher's Stone being the formula that would basically give the person who had it the alchemical means of turning a base metal into gold, but also any form of sort of purification, indeed the secret of life, effectively. This Philosopher's Stone was a world-changing concept. The Philosopher's Stone was the H-bomb. If you had the Philosopher's Stone, you had complete financial and thus military superiority of every other nation in the world. 